You are listening to Charting Wealth for Thursday, the 22nd of February, 2018. We see all sorts of interesting things going on for the day. Everything down the S&P 500, down half a percent. The NASDAQ 100, down just over a quarter of a percent. TLT, that's the 20-year bonds, down 1.23%. We see our weekly vertical crossover continuing to run beautifully in that inverse trade. And gold, down 0.46%. Let's first jump into the S&P 500. Remember the big drop for the week ending the 9th of February. We had a, a bit of a recovery over the next week. Not enough, of course, to rotate the weekly vertical crossover out of existence. The price percent oscillator continued to move down throughout the course of that week. It was a green up candle, but not a big one. It fell right easily within that big down candle on the prior week. Now, the green candle, that's what ended up at the end of the week, ending Friday the 16th of February. And so far, as we go into the first three days of this latest five-day candle, we have a green open box candle, a very little one with a wick on the bottom and a longer wick on top. Derivative oscillator continuing to gain downward momentum. Price percent oscillator has shifted over, going even further down. So again, we see more downward momentum continuing. It's sort of like, as I said before, you've got a house. The house appears to be stable as the market did. And all of a sudden you kick about half the foundation out. That was that drop for the week ending the 9th of February. And now things are a bit unstable and unsettled. People realize Everything can go down. What do we see going on on the two-day candles? Well, we saw after six big, down, well, six days, that's three two-day candles of down, strong down movement ending the 9th of February, the market started moving up on the three-day, the two-day candles for three of those for six days of up movement ending on the 16th. And then what do we see with the latest two-day candle? for the movement on Tuesday the 20th and Wednesday the 21st. We have a red hammer. And again, that's an open box red candle, not as strong as a solid red down candle, but then, but it does show a pullback in the market. Remember, we're still in a confirmed down move since we had that weekly vertical crossover on the 9th. We also have a two-day crossover in effect. And we have down movement. The price percent oscillator is actually moving down. Derivative oscillator continues to lose downward momentum. But as we look at the four-hour chart, we talked about this on yesterday's broadcast that we peaked out somewhere around the 274 mark, and things have been sliding sideways for two and a half days now. In fact, the market had a, has been just pretty much dojis or or... Uh, stars, and what we see happening is we continue to, well, spinning tops rather, we continue to see a lot of indecision tending down. Three of the last four candles have been red. We see that a derivative oscillator has continued to lose momentum since the morning of the 16th, and the price percent oscillator now is headed down. It hasn't crossed over going down yet, but we are primed. If you see a crossover going down on that, pull the trigger into an inverse trade or a put option on the S&P 500 on one of your virtual trades. Now, there is an inverse fund called SH, and that again, Sierra Hotel. It is an inverse fund. It's the ProShares uh, ETF inverse, and what it does is it moves up when the S&P 500 moves down. When the S&P 500 moves up, it moves down. So it is the opposite of the S&P 500. So if we do have a crossover going up, SH is going to, well, a crossover, <laughs> this is where it gets confusing. Crossover in the S&P 500 going down, SH will go up. It is an inverse fund. It says it calls itself a short of the S&P 500. There are leveraged funds that for every dollar the S&P goes down, it goes up approximately $2. That's a double. There's a triple. Again, let's just practice, my friends, with just a short if you want to do that. Or if you want to buy a put, you, of course, if you know how to do that, you can buy that in your virtual account. But again, 
We will continue to watch and see. Trade hasn't set up yet. Don't get in too early. Let's just see how things move. Okay, from the S&P 500, we'll speed up a little bit. The Qs, we see a lot of the same things happening. We see that the, although the, the candle is bigger for the week on the Qs, we see a green up candle, but the derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum. Price percent oscillators ticked over, going a little bit further down, not down as much as we saw on the S&P 500, but it is ticked over going down the price percent oscillator. As we look at the two-day chart, we can see that it's losing downward momentum. Price percent oscillator is actually moving up toward the uh, toward a crossover going up, still down though, and the latest candle we have is a red open box down candle. Looks like price has peaked somewhere around the 165.50 mark or so. And as we plug into the four hour chart, what do we see? Again, doji's sort of ringing across the board. It had a little bit of up movement in the morning that trailed off in the afternoon. A red doji, red star means lots of indecision. See things flat as far as the price percent oscillator goes, derivative oscillator losing energy. Again, if it crosses over going down on the cues, be ready to jump in to a potential short trade with an inverse fund. If you've not listened to the training we have at the website and at our YouTube channel, which is Inverse Funds, How to Make Money When Markets Crash, please do that. It's one of our most popular recordings. doesn't have 64,000 listens like our Heiken Ashi Candlestick recording has, but it has several thousand. So again, appreciate all you guys do every day to make us one of the top podcasts in the world when it comes to charting and the stock market and what we try to do and what we try to teach. That's what we're all about. Remember, we're not a stock calling service. We are an education firm. Now, let's move from the queues to TLT. Really proud of this. It's beautiful. We called it. We called it back on the 5th of January when we saw the weekly vertical crossover. We were set because the two-day chart had rolled over a week or two prior. And then when we had that happen, of course, we had our jumping in point that following week. And things have gone according to our Heiken Ashi candlesticks. And again, these are these are weighted in, in different, and I'm not swearing to the price jump in point because it is different on the Heiken Ashi candlesticks the way it's related. But for our purposes and our, our training purposes, jumping in point somewhere around about the 125.50, 126 point. And of course, how far down over the course of one, two, three, four, five, six, going into seven weeks from about 125 to the lowest of the lows, 116.51. What is that, eight and a half dollars on a hundred and twenty dollar, hundred and twenty-five dollar fund? That's some real money, folks, in that short trade. And again, just beautiful. And down for the day, 100, 1.23%. Derivative oscillators continuing to gain downward momentum. Price percent oscillator continuing to shoot down on that weekly chart. We, as we go to the, oops, to the two-day chart, what do we see? Well, of course, we had some concerns as things were sliding sideways. Things, however, on this latest candle dropped off quite nicely. Derivative oscillator still losing downward momentum. That price percent oscillator kicked over going down again, which is beautiful. What do we see on that four-hour chart? Again, getting close to crossing over, going down. And again, watch that in the morning. You might have a good jumping in point if you pulled yourself out, which would not have been unwise to do at all there around the 13th when things crossed over going up because that was a beautiful trade up to that point. What about 118 or so? 118.50 at the worst? That was beautiful just beautiful from 125 to 118 over the course of a few a few weeks, six weeks. That's gorgeous. So if it crosses back over and gives you another jumping in point, consider it for another practice trade and hopefully a winning one. Okay, what do we see going on now as we go to gold? Remember, gold had that weekly vertical crossover going up. We had a nice trade in gold for three weeks, and we looked at pulling the plug there after we had that peak what gold went from somewhere in the neighborhood of about 124 up to a beautiful 129.52. That's gorgeous. In three weeks, absolutely beautiful. Then gold started petering off and has really just dropped sideways on us for the last going into four weeks. So far this week, 
a red doji. That means indecision on the weekly chart tending down, derivative oscillator losing energy, price percent oscillator headed down. As we look at the two-day chart, we see that it's kinked over with this latest red candle going down. And again, we violated way back our weekly uh, trend line, which of course was a good point to pull the plug if you didn't take the top out, um, which is always hard to do. Uh, again, the only way you actually take a top out on that is to keep trying to ride yourself a nice trend line and pull it when that's violated or just have a sell point and just be happy with what you want from it and walk away. So we see a red down candle on the latest two-day chart derivative oscillator uh, still well losing downward momentum price percent oscillator headed down. And as we look at our four-hour chart, what are we seeing? Well, we saw that crossover going down in the morning and continuing in the afternoon. Those red candles are lining up nicely. Part of the issues that we have now with the topping out is, again, the problem that we have whenever you have an oscillator is that prices need to move in one direction or the other. When things start topping out and hold it for four candles, takes a while for your oscillator, that is the PPO, to catch up with that mood crossing over going down as we saw in those candles. We do now have a crossover going down. We'll see how long that moves down. Remember, we still have an up move on the weekly. And again, that's not dispositive for gold because when that four-hour chart's working, it's working. But of course, we have that schizophrenia with the two-day chart in a down move and, of course, the four-hour heading down strongly. So if you jumped in this afternoon on gold on that four-hour chart, good for you. Continue to pay attention. Be a little leery of that four-hour chart because it has gotten a little sloppy on us lately. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day on, thir on Wednesday as we go into Thursday, the 22nd of February. We so appreciate you being with us. We've changed the charts up a little bit. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, adding some exponential and some simple moving averages to help you find maybe some levels of support and levels of resistance as far as our candlesticks go, and also just to sort of show you where things are in relation to our price percent oscillator when we're looking at just those moving averages, those exponential moving averages. So we'll talk more about that later. Love to hear from you. Always feel free to write us CW at chartingwealth.com. If you want to get the latest charts, the latest information, all the things we have in the training for free, then of course, what do you need to do? You need to go to chartingwealth.com and sign up for the daily market reviews. It's absolutely free. CW at chartingwealth.com. You can write us, but if you go to Charting Wealth, put in your name, your email address, and we'll put you on the list and you'll get everything Every day the markets are open. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.